Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. We're so happy that you came out to join us for Boston's unfinished march for jobs, freedom, and justice. We came out today to commemorate, but not to commemorate by having a romantic view of 50 years ago. It's important that we commemorate what happened 50 years ago because it was at that time that people from the North and the South, from the East and the West, black people, white people, Latinos, Asians, labor, non-labor, the church, the synagogues, the temples, the mosque, the people came together in order to advance jobs, freedom, and justice. We have to honor those who marched then. Some of you are here today. Some of you were not there then, but we've continued to struggle. So we thank you for coming. So we've got a series of speakers and we're gonna be acknowledging our co-sponsors. My name is Chuck Winder, Executive Director of the Boston Workers Alliance. And we're gonna start off, however, in keeping with the spirit of the movement. It's more than just politics that will get us where we need to go. We need to honor the spirituality that connects us together, whether you believe or don't believe, and whatever you believe, we ask you to take this moment that bonds us together, the moment that brings us together in compassion and love that helps us to build that beloved community. In order to do that, we bring forward Samantha Akwe. All right. Now, if you're happy to be, be, be here, just wave your flag one. All right, look at us. So I recognize that today we bring not only our bodies, but our spirits. And we also bring the, an the spirit of our ancestors. Am I right? Yes, we right. Do. So I want to use the black singer Pe Pearl Bailey's words in saying, we cannot belong to anyone else unless we belong to ourselves. So I want you to take a moment to close your eyes and feel yourself here. And it was black writer Zora Neale Hurston that said, no man may make another man free. Freedom is something internal. All you can do is to give the opportunity for freedom and the man himself must make his own emancipation. So no, this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity. And beyond freedom, let us be reminded of activist Marcus Garvey, he said, if we must have justice, we must be strong. And if we must be strong, we must come together. And if we must come together, we can only do so through the system of organization. And though we are organized here, it is activist A. Philip Randolph that reminds us that no organization can do everything, but every organization can do something. Do we have a flag to that? Every organization can do something. So thank you to every person and organization rep here, represented here today. Can we give ourselves a hand? And lastly, poet Go Paula Allen reminds us that the root of oppression is a loss of memory. I'm going to repeat that. The root of oppression is a loss of memory. So let us not forget what this day is all about, what it stands for, who stands around us, who stood before us, and what our spirits hold. Thank you. So it's been 50 years. It looks like we have some unfinished business. Now I'm really, really thrilled to see all of you out here. It's been my pleasure for the last couple of years to serve as a chaplain to the Occupy movement. And it was right here in this historic park that we got our beginning. And for me as a person of faith, I have taken so much hope 
and so much courage and so much strength from seeing the presence of others willing to come out, interrupt their lives, and be here together. So we also have some community groups here. Do we have the Right to the City Alliance here? Right to the City Boston? How about City Life Vita Urbana? I'm going to show a bias. What about Boston Workers Alliance? <laughs> so I know a couple groups that we do have. We do have the Youth Justice Youth Justice Power Union is here in the house. And I think it's important that we acknowledge their presence today because, you know, in 63 they didn't have youth speaking. The youngest person was a young adult and that was, that was uh, Lewis, right? Congressman John Lewis. But today we have our youth. So it's not enough for us to stand with them if we have a Trayvon Martin. We have to stand with them every day. As we bring forward Kenny and Takesha Watson from the Youth Justice Power Union. Hello guys. Um, so an hour ago I was supposed to do a speech and I just wrote it in like 10 minutes. So yeah. Oh, okay, I'll speak louder. We came from a place of instability, segregation, and inequality. Where the color of your skin defines your destiny. It determines where you live, what you learn, and how much you make. It's been 50 years of fighting and for some reason we all still stand here today. Martin Luther King fought for our freedom, housing, jobs, education, all the things we are still fighting for. Youth are more likely to turn to violence because of budget cuts. The government continues to give us less than what we deserve in order to reach our destination. Why is it that we fight every year doing all the right things with the wrong outcomes? Something's missing. We're asking that the government funds more youth jobs so less youth in the streets. We want 14,000 youth jobs in Boston, which is less than 1% of the government's budget. We're asking for equal education in every community, suburban or urban, so that the dropout rates can decrease instead of increase. I believe that in order to get where we want to be, we have to demand, not ask. Why ask for something we're originally entitled to? From this year on, we need to demand it. Show them that yes, we are youth, but no, this is not a game. Because we are yet to be taken seriously. In order to do so, we need to want it. Want it like you want new sneakers or a new trending media site. Fight like our life depends on it because it actually does. My name is Takesha Watson, and I am a social justice activist demanding for change. So now we're going to bring up, you know, one of the things we want to bring up, you know, you heard our young people talk about mass incarceration. You also heard Suzanne Bruce talk about mass incarceration. But one of our board members and a member leader, also the chair of Boston Workers Alliance's Criminal Justice Committee, is Suni Ali. And he's here to talk about something very important. We're here today on the Common, but we also want you to come back again on April the 4th on the Common, and Suni's going to tell you why. Suni Ali, come on forward. Suni Ali. Peace, everyone. Peace. I'm glad to see everybody here. God bless you. I'm here because criminal justice has a whole lot to do with unemployment. Right. Underemployment, right. under education, right. poverty right. in itself. We always talk about stop the violence. Well, poverty in itself is a violence. Right. A few more shout outs. Dorchester People for Peace, are you in the house? Yeah. What about the coalition to fund our communities and cut military spending at 25%? Yeah. How about Matahara Eye of the Day? And then we also don't want to forget Mash Cars. I saw Marcy back here. Is Mash Cars in the house? And then again, the Brazilian immigrant workers. We also want to acknowledge Mass, our, our Massachusetts AFL-CIO and the Greater Boston Labor Council. So give it up for labor. Give it up for the unions. Give it up for the community.
community groups. Give it up for our neighborhoods. Give it up for the peace groups. I also have the pleasure today of introducing one of Boston's founding freedom fighters. And when injustices are, are happening in other parts of this country, there are injustices here that we cannot stand for. The man I'm gonna introduce you has fought as an organizer for over decades here in Boston, but also on the policy level as Boston's former city councilor, Chuck Turner. Thank you. You know, I'm, um, I'm really pleased and honored to be back with you. The, the one, one, one thing, let, let me say though, I, I, I was saying to some people as we rode down here, and that is that, you know, the, the problem I have is that coming back to some place where you haven't been for almost three years, things are still the same. people see you where you were when you were there mm. and three years have passed and you were someplace that you weren't three years ago think about it think about what you thought and where you were uh, and kind of what you were focused on three years ago and where you are now well you know we're all the same way and I say that to say that while I really I'm my heart overflows with the welcome you know and I really appreciate the welcome and I really hope that what I have to say today will seem connected to what I had to say three years ago and that you will see a continuation of the vision that I've tried to have in moving forward with our struggle. You know, the March on Washington, the uh, March for Jobs and Justice was followed by the Equal Accommodations Act. It was followed by the Voters' Rights Act. All of those, those three pieces of action, Fair Housing Act of 1968, those actions framed an era of unprecedented progress for African Americans in this country in terms of our moving into the system. There was, there was a growth of uh, opportunity, there was a growth of, of wealth, uh, of jobs. We had people entering professions, every walk of life. We had more, we, we had a few politicians at the beginning of that era. Now we have thousands at all levels of government, even a president of the United States and a, a governor of this state. So. I have to start by saying that we have to recognize that over the last 50 years there's been unprecedented, unprecedented progress for African Americans. And yet, in the honest, realistic appraisal of the situation, we'd have to say that the majority of us, the majority of African Americans are worse off today than we were in 1963, brothers and sisters. We have to, if we're going to be honest, if we're going to really base our movement, our activities, on a firm foundation, we have to look at reality. Looking at reality doesn't mean that we are uh, disrespecting the work that went on, but it means that if we are going to be in sync with our people, we have to be in sync with all our people. We can't just be in sync with those who have opportunities, those who've moved ahead, those who have degrees. We have to be in sync with all our people. The fight, 350 year fight in this country was waged in order that African Americans as a whole could 
be free, could be equal, could live a quality of life that was deserving by a human being. Our fight was for everyone, not just a few.